Hello Godot users. Today on Godot Tidbits I'd like to talk about global signals. Okay, scenario. You've been practicing your pixel art and you've come up with an awesome little squirrel and a little lemur guy and then you decided to start on a weapon so you made a cool axe and so you decided to take the squirrel and give him the axe and let him swing it around and you're gonna call the game Axe Squirrel! So you set up a scene, you add your squirrel you add a couple of enemies, you go to your squirrel, and you get him set up to swing his axe, and you test it out, and he can run around, and he can swing his axe, and he can chop his enemies, and life is pretty good. Kachunk. But then as you consider scaling your game, you start to think about, what if the squirrel doesn't want an axe? What if the squirrel wants to swing a bat? What if you want the squirrel to have a gun? Or a gun with a laser sight that can toggle on and off? Or a gun with a laser sight at the end of a giant cyber arm. But if you're talking about something that's not even in the squirrel's hierarchy, you want the squirrel to throw a mine and be able to detonate that mine on command. What if you want the squirrel to jump into the back of a mounted weapon and fire away? And then you realize you're statically referencing your hand. And the problem with that is our axe is currently a direct child of the hand, and the hand is currently a direct child of the player. These are static because they were dragged in manually as children of the player hierarchy. And so in this particular use case, it's okay to directly reference them. The issue is when we start dynamically instantiating things and removing them, or we're not sure where they're going to be in the hierarchy. For example, what if they had, we had the axe swinging at the end of the cyber arm? What if we had the gun and the laser assembly was a child of the gun and we wanted the player to be able to activate that laser assembly? with the same command that he did for something else that was somewhere else in the hierarchy. At that point, the right thing to do is to use signals. Godot has built-in signals that we use all the time for when we're entering the tree or exiting the tree. And basically what you can do is you can connect the signal and it will connect to the script and it will give you a function or a method that you can run when that signal is emitted. And that works fairly well within the player hierarchy. The problem is we're going to be moving things around within this hierarchy and we're going to be instantiating things in the main level hierarchy and so we need to be able to transfer signals to things that are outside of our direct reach. That's where global signals come in. In Godot when we talk about global signals what we're really talking about is an implementation of an event bus. And an event bus is basically a centralized entity, in this case we'll call it global signal, that is responsible for handling, managing multiple events. And it consists of a sender being able to send an event into our centralized entity. In this case, it will be emitting a signal that's housed within global signal itself. And then one or more receivers that are registered with the global signal to act on those events. And the basis for this global signal entity that is a zero or one to many relationship. Basically, we can have that signal reacted on by multiple receivers, and we can have multiple senders sending in those signals. And this creates a network of event management that seems complicated uh, at first glance, but once you see how it's implemented, it'll be super simple. So grab some supplies and get ready to code, because here we go. Back in our editor, we've made a few simple changes to prepare to utilize this new dynamic method uh, with our global signals. We've removed the axe from being a direct child of the hand since we're going to dynamically instantiate it. We've gone ahead and mapped some of our inputs to handle the things we're going to have the player doing. And we've put a placeholder down here uh, for when we're going to want to remove a weapon to make room for the next one. We've also created an array to hold the pack scenes of the weapons we're going to be switching between. And if you go over to the inspector and choose your player, that array now can be populated with elements. And because we've statically typed it as a pack scene, we know that we can now drag our axe, our bat, and our gun over and have them stored in that array. And that's weird. For some reason, Godot likes to pick thumbnails at random. Uh, but if we click on this and say open scene, then we can be sure that we did indeed drag our axe in there. 
in order to use this new array we have a function called switch weapon and all we'll do in there is make sure that we have weapons in the array to switch to removing a weapon before a new one is instantiated will be handled by our global signal entity because we're not sure where in the hierarchy the weapon may exist right now it'll be under hand but it may eventually be under a cyber arm or something like that this also allows us to remove a weapon if we have thrown the axe or something like that then we will simply instantiate the weapon and attach it to hand as a child and this is still okay because hand is still a static member of the player hierarchy and won't be going anywhere then we just increment the index of the array and make sure that we don't go out of bounds and that takes care of our player script next what we're going to do is create a folder for our new utility so we'll create a folder called global signal and within that folder we will create a new script called global signal and then we will open that script for editing and we're going to leave this as a node because that allows us to load this as an auto load uh, singleton I think it's also called and the reason that's important is if we go to project project settings auto load and we're going to click on the folder icon and find our new script and we're going to make sure it's named global signal and we're going to add it in now when we go to play our game and we go over to our remote hierarchy we will see that the level exists as a child of this root object and when you load an auto load in it exists as a node that is a sibling of our level and this allows us to do things outside of the influence or level. It's handy for save games. In this particular case, it's going to allow us to broadcast a global signal and we can have other nodes listening to it regardless of their place in the hierarchy. Back over in our player script, we can count one, two, three, four places we'll need our new utility. Activating a weapon should swing our axe or shoot the gun wherever they are. Launching a mine should spawn a mine at our current position. Exploding the mine should detonate the mine wherever it happens to be in the level. And then lastly, remember that remove weapon, we want to use our global signal utility because we're not sure where it will be in the hierarchy. All it takes to create these events is to go back into our new utility and create a signal for every event that we want to handle in our new bus. In this case, we just used the built-in signal type and named it accordingly. The only caveat here is that when we spawn the mine, we're going to want the mine to spawn at the player's current global position. So we will just add a global position vector2 parameter to the signal. This will allow the player to attach his position as a parameter when he's emitting the signal and allow the spawning entity to pull that parameter out and position the new mine accordingly when it is instantiated. And that's really all there is to it. I know I said it looked complicated in the slideshow, but we're done. Let's go see how we can implement this new logic in the player's script. Remember that we said when we play our game, anything we have as an auto load is registering itself as a child of root, and the node name is going to be the same as the name of the auto load. The benefit to that is that when we go to use it in our script, it also loads as a global class. So we can start typing global signal and it automatically pops up. And then we can use auto completion and call our player activated weapon and dot emit. And everything is filled in for us. This makes it extremely easy to iterate through your code generation. And then we will just go do the same thing for the launch mine and the explode mine and the remove weapon. Remember our caveat that we needed to pass in our global position as a parameter when we're going to spawn a mine. And so that is as easy as putting our global position into the parameters in when we call the emit method. That takes care of our player script, and that should be all the locations where we're going to be sending events into our new event bus global signal entity. Let's move on and get our axe swinging. In order to listen for these new events, we're going to want to connect to the signals that exist in our global entity. For the axe, we don't want to be listening for the signal unless we're an active member of the tree. So we're going to skip the built-in ready function. 
We're going to go over to our node, make sure we're looking at signals, and then we're going to connect the tree entered and the tree exiting signal to our script. And then within those two, we are going to find our global signal and we are going to look for the player activated weapon. And then instead of emit, we are going to connect and we are going to provide the method name we want to call when we hear the signal. In this case, it will be swing. And note that if you use autocomplete for this particular method, it will add the parentheses for you. We don't want those since we're just attaching a callable. We're going to duplicate this line and we're going to look for the player removed weapon instead. And then we will attach our remove weapon method. And then when we leave the tree, we want to stop listening to these signals. So we will just duplicate both of these lines and instead of connecting, we will disconnect. And that will take care of our axe. Let's move on and do the same thing to our bat script. I'm sorry. Okay, so we've got our bat wired up the same way we did our axe. And now if we play the game, we see that we can have our hero switch weapons and swing weapons. And when we change weapons, the previous weapon removes itself and the new weapon swings. And all that is working through our global signal entity. Now, we're going to go ahead and forgo wiring up our gun in favor of the mine, so we can show how this works outside of the player's hierarchy. We can move over to our level script, where we've preloaded the mine as a pack scene and created a method to spawn that mine at a given global position. All we need to do now is in our ready function, we will find our global signal and look for the player spawned mine, and then we will connect that to our spawn mine callable. And because we're attaching this as a callable without the parentheses, the parameters will already be passed in. So if we go ahead and play the game now, we see that we can move around and if we hit our spawn mine button, a mine is launched out into the world at our current global position. And then finally, moving back over to our mine script, you can see that I've already connected the tree entered and tree exiting signals to our script. And then we can just go under those new methods, find our global signal, find the player exploded mine, and connect that particular signal to our explode callable. Make sure we do not use the parentheses. And then we can copy this down to our exiting tree and make sure that we disconnect it so that we're not listening for that after we leave the uh, viewport and queue free ourselves. And then if we save and play our game, we see that our hero can now run around and launch mines at will and explode them at will wherever they happen to be. And that'll do it for Axe Squirrel until we need to call on him again. You can take what we've built here and use it modularly and remix to your heart's content anytime you need to emit a signal into the world. To sum up, we created a node script that we loaded as an autoload which allows us to create an event bus that we can then go and create individual signals under. We can allow a sender to emit that signal with optional parameters, and we can allow a receiver to register to listen for that signal and execute a method when it hears that signal. That will be the end of today's Godot tidbits. Please let me know in the comments if you have any questions or if you have any suggestions for future tidbits. Thank you for listening, and have a good day. That's